Okay, good morning, everyone. So now I have the pleasure of introducing our speakers, Marielle Diaz and Craig Stein, and they are with uh, the hired executive. Now for uh, a few of you, you probably remember them from before. And uh, so they spoke last year and uh, we had just such amazing feedback from them and they have you know just great input and uh, a lot to share. And they'll share more about their company, but their company really is uh, um, all about getting executives hired. And there's many people who have gone through bootcamp who have uh, shared with me that they've joined the program and um, lots of raving fans. So I'm going to turn it over to Marielle and Craig, and they're going to uh, share more. And then Marielle, who is uh, probably one of the brightest women you'll ever meet, uh, will, you know, kind of go in and, and share more about, you know, mindset of hiring and, and et cetera. So uh, Mary Ellen Craig, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much for the very, very kind introduction. We're both super excited to be here this morning, particularly this morning. Um, we live in San Diego, and I think it rains about three days a year here. Today it was pouring rain and very depressing, but, but uh, the music that you guys were playing at the beginning of the event just perked us right back up and uh, <clears throat> it was the perfect time. So very excited to be here. Um, as Christy said, if you're on the call before Christmas, uh, during the holiday, before the holidays, nice to see you again. If this is your first time, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. So I'm going to share my screen here, and we have a presentation to take you through. Uh, it says, can screen share while somebody else is sharing? Share screen. Christy, I'm trying to share, but I get a... She's working on it. Yeah. Try it now. We, we there got you it. go. Okay. Two seconds. And for everyone, if you can mute yourselves, that would be uh, easier for Craig to present to, please. All right. So can you, can you see the, the presentation now? Yes? Mm -hmm. Can't hear you. You're muted. Okay. <laughs> I'm not muted, correct? You're not muted. And you may want to use the slideshow option so that we don't see all your slides. Oh, yeah. On. Let me see. Okay, hold on a second. We shouldn't be seeing all of them. <laughs> Let's do a slideshow again. That was the slideshow. Garage door just. Can you see that? Is that good? That's much better. Thanks for working. Okay, fantastic. All right, so my name is Craig Stein. Joining me today is Mario Diaz. We are the co-founders, as Christy was saying, of the Hired Executive. It's an eight-week program to fast-track executives back into the workforce. We also work with retiring senior military who've spent approximately 20 years in the military. Uh, they're now retiring, and they would like to build a civilian career. So I have an MBA in marketing and strategy. I ran a marketing and branding agency for approximately 10 years. And the inspiration for this program actually came from the fact that I myself have been in transition twice in my life. Uh, the first time was back in 2003. I got a call one morning and found out that I was diagnosed with cancer. Great news. Thankfully, I'm a cancer free right now and uh, everything is great on that front. Uh, but that was definitely what, <clears throat> what we call um, just my life interrupted. Uh, the second time was a few years ago. I was with a startup company. I was head of international business development, and they ended up letting go of their entire sales and marketing department because they wanted to go back and do additional R&D on the technology. So I'm no stranger uh, to the world of being an executive in transition. Marielle? So my name is Marielle. I'm a psychotherapist, an attorney, and also an executive coach. And I specialize in helping our clients get clarity so they can create a very crystal clear vision so that way they can create the outcomes that they want in their life and also in their career. Great. So, uh, so we like to say that, oh, Maria, this is for you. So today we're gonna cover a lot of things about the transition process, but before I share what we're gonna cover, I wanna invite you guys to be interactive during this presentation. We're gonna go through the presentation completely to make sure that we cover everything but we'll, we will have plenty of time for questions at the end. So please make sure if you have questions that you're putting them into the chat and then we'll interact quite a bit towards the end. 
So today what we want is for you to walk away with some concrete things that you can apply in your job search process. So we're gonna start off by just having a mindset shift in terms of embracing this transition as an opportunity for you to reflect and get clear on the next phase of your life and your career. So one of the things that's really important to remember when you find yourself in transition, particularly if it's not something that you've chosen, is that we need to slow down first so we can speed up. So if you can take this as an opportunity to really get clear on what type of role is going to best serve you, not only in your career, but also in your life, it's gonna help you move forward in a much more effective way. So that's the mindset shift that I wanna invite you to bring into your job search process and also into our conversation that we're gonna to have together today. We're also gonna share some practical tools with you and some daily practices that are gonna help you to work on your mindset. So mindset work is something that we're all familiar with, but oftentimes people know about it and they know it's something that they quote unquote should do and then they don't actually implement it on a daily basis when they need it most. So I'm gonna give you a tool that you can use on a daily basis that's gonna help you stay strong and resilient as you navigate through the job search process. We're also gonna share our framework that we use at the hired executive, the steps that we take our clients through. And as we go through these steps, we really wanna encourage you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. So as we move through the steps, I'll give you that instruction but it's really important for you to use this presentation as an opportunity to self-assess where you're at in your own job search process, what your strengths are, and also where there's some opportunity for you to receive support. Craig is also gonna cover the art of telling a compelling story. This is one of the things we hear quite a bit from our prospective clients and our clients. They feel some level of stress about how to share their story in a compelling way during networking events and also during interviews. So we're gonna give you a tool that you can use to really look at how you're sharing your story and how you might make it even more effective and more compelling. And then we're also gonna share the benefits of having a team approach as you navigate through the job search process. Great. So we like to say that the, jo that the job search process is like the back of a Rolex watch. So on the screen is a picture of a $250,000 one, one Pablo Montoya special edition Rolex. And you'll see this is the back of the watch. Walter. Pardon me? I, I got some feedback. So um, inside the back of the watch, there are hundreds of parts and they're all machined to perfection. But if just one of those parts falters and stops working, the whole watch stops. And it is really no different for the job search process. There are eight critical areas of the job search process, and they all need to work together. They need to be in harmony. They, they need to support each other. And if just one of those areas is not firing on all cylinders, it can sabotage the entire process. So there are two forces that hinder you. One is not being an expert at the job search process. And the second is seeking transition support from a single source. So when I was in transition, I would be out and about, you know, networking and trying to land my next gig. And I met really smart people who worked at top companies, they had great roles. They were in transition, you know, like everybody is here for a variety of reasons. There was downsizing, mergers, acquisitions, layoffs, the list goes on. I mean, as Guy Kawasaki says, Shiitake, you know, a shiitake happens. Um, and I was puzzled. I could not understand how people with these like super impressive backgrounds could not get an interview. Or more puzzling, they would have an interview or two or three or sometimes 10, but they could not land the job. So I took a step back and I realized that just because somebody is the VP of finance or the VP of operations or the VP of marketing, it didn't mean that they were the VP of the job search process. And why would they be? I mean, that isn't what they spent the past 10 or 12 years or more of their life focusing on, right? So the other reason, the, sorry, the other thing that I realized is that the folks who were seeking support, in large part, they were seeking support from a single source. And it's great, it's awesome to reach out for support. However, at the executive level, it's very important to have expert level support with each stage of the job search process. Because no matter how good a coach is, um, 
it's they're probably not an expert at every single area. I think a great analogy is sports. Like take the NFL, for example. Any team in the NFL has an offensive coach, a defensive coach, a quarterback coach, a kicking coach, a head coach. The reason being is that specialization is very ne necessary at the high level. So you may be wondering about what makes the hired executive different. So one of the things that makes us different is that we have a unique program structure. So we have a laser focused eight week one on one program with a team approach. And it's our team approach that really makes us different. So as Craig was mentioning, rather than having one coach coach you through all of the areas of the job search process, we've assembled a team of subject matter experts for each stage of the job search process. So that way we're each coaching you within our own zone of genius, really helping you to peak perform. At the executive level, it's really important to get that extra competitive edge. And so with our team approach, you get expert guidance with every single stage of the job search process. And we combine a done with you and done for you format. So where we can, we actually do some of the work for you. So we do have the country's number one resume writing service that works with our clients. And Erin and her team create a done for you resume, cover letter, and also LinkedIn profile. And so that part is done for you. And then our coaches meet with you one on one. So it's not a group program, it's highly tailored to you, very individualized to help you get that competitive edge in each area of the job search process. And we use a peak performance approach to winning the interview and landing the job. So what that means is all of our clients, everybody here at this coffee is you know, high performing. So we take you from where you're at right now and push you a little bit out of your comfort zone so you can peak perform and perform at an even higher level. So as we go through the core areas that we cover with our clients, this is gonna be your opportunity to self-assess. So the first area that I take our clients through is clarity. So as we go through each of our eight areas, I wanna invite you on a piece of paper or wherever it is that you can to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. So how clear are you feeling in your own job search process right now? On a scale of one to 10, one being low, 10 being high. And we're gonna invite you to do this for each step that we go through. The reason for this is you can use this presentation that we're doing with you here today as an opportunity to get clarity on each of these eight steps that we're gonna take you through. And having clarity is really important. It's very difficult to hit a moving target. And so at the beginning of the job search process, many people will come into that just in an automatic reactive manner, either just simply looking for another version of the job they've previously been doing, or some people will come into it with quite a bit of fear and scarcity mentality and feel like they need to just take whatever they can. So what I like to do with our clients is help them really get clear on what is motivating you, what actually interests you, and what are the goals of your next career move. We've all noticed a lot of things changing in the world over the last few years as we've been navigating through all of the changes with COVID and all of the world changes. And many people have shared with me that having some time to reflect and transition has actually helped them to get very clear on what their priorities are, not only in career, but also in their lives. So if you take time to pause to slow down before you speed up so you can get clear, you can be sure that you're creating a career that's really feel, filled with purpose, something that really fuels you, that motivates you, that excites you. It's important for many reasons, right? For your life satisfaction, for feeling good in your career. But it's also important to get this clarity to prevent being in transition again, because unfortunately, executives oftentimes will find themselves in transition again within a matter of 12 to 18 months. And we really want to prevent that from happening. And that happens by slowing down to get clear so that way you can speed up. The next area that we take our clients through is mindset. So right now, I want to invite you to be very honest with yourself. Are you doing mindset work on a daily basis? You don't have to answer that. You certainly don't need to put your answer in the chat, but I want you to be really honest with yourself because sometimes we think we have a great mindset. We read mindset books. We listen to mindset podcasts. 
but we're not actually doing the work of challenging our automatic negative thoughts as we're navigating through the day and in this situation as we're navigating through the job search process. So mindset work is just like exercise. You can watch exercise videos, you can think about exercising, but if you don't actually move your body, not a whole lot is gonna happen. Same thing with mindset work. You can think about it, you can listen to videos, you can listen to podcasts, you can read books, but if you don't actually take the time to do the work, it's not going to be effective. So this is one of the first areas that I work with our clients on to develop a daily mindset practice. And I provide them with a high level of accountability to make sure that they're actually doing it. Mindset work is something I've been teaching for about 20 years now, and I still do my own daily mindset practice. I'm human just like you. I may miss a day or two here or there. But what you find is that this work becomes self-reinforcing because when you make a commitment to do it every day, you feel better. And not only do you feel better, you get better results. So we all have negative self-talk and it's important to have the tools and resources to challenge that negative self-talk so that way you can create the outcomes that you want. So those of you who were here with us at the end of the year may recognize this tool. This is a tool I call the triangle, and this is the tool that I'm going to give you today to work with. If this is review for you, I want to reassure you that you cannot practice this tool enough. So I've been teaching this tool for 20 years, and I still use it almost every single day. So if you could peek inside my own personal journal, you would see triangles all over the place. And so I'm going to walk you through how to use this, and I really want to encourage you to use this every single day moving forward. You can use this with life stress and you can absolutely use this with any sort of stress that you face in the job search process. So it's very simple and it's so simple that a lot of people think they can just think through it in their own minds. So I wanna be really clear, this tool only works if you actually write it out. So I'm gonna walk you through the framework and then I'm gonna walk you through an example. So the idea is that you write down the situation whatever it is that the, is causing you some problems. Oftentimes people notice that they need to use the triangle because they're having some negative emotions. They're feeling frustrated. They're feeling irritated. They're feeling down or sad, discouraged, defeated. That's how you know that you need to work with this tool. Okay, so you write down the situation. Uh, it could be something like uh, looking on LinkedIn for connection opportunities, right? And then you write down, your thoughts, your automatic negative thoughts that you're having. You write down the feelings using feeling words. And I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence, but I've noticed over the years teaching this, when I ask people, how are you feeling? Or what are your feelings when you think of the situation? People oftentimes will answer with their thoughts. So feeling words are things like angry, irritated, frustrated, annoyed, sad, happy, relaxed, right? So you wanna go with feeling words when you think through the thoughts. And then the idea is that your thoughts create feelings and those feelings then create actions. Okay, so here's an example of the negative. And this is something I hear from our clients all the time. They beat themselves up after an interview and their mind is taking them to the area of the interview where they feel like they performed poorly. So the situation is reflecting after an interview, wishing I had given a different answer to the question, right? Some thoughts that people can have in this situation are, I blew it, I'm never gonna be moved along now, it's gonna take me forever to find a job. And then the feelings that these thoughts can create are things like frustration, disappointment, feeling discouraged, right? Which then prompt the actions of rumination, replaying that portion of the interview over and over and over again obsessing over what you wish you would have said, uh, venting to friends and family, continuing to think about it, right? Carrying those thoughts with you as you move through your evening, through your weekend, through other activities that you're doing. So this is something that we've all experienced. Everybody I'm sure here has experienced beating themselves up. We tend to be our own worst critic, right? So this is an example of the negative version of this triangle. So what we wanna do with this triangle to use it effectively is to identify the situation that we're having a hard time with, work through the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions. Then you wanna ask yourself, what's a more helpful way I could think about this? Or what's a more empowered way I could think about this? And then you repeat the triangle. 
So here's the more positive version of this. And I want to caution you when I say positive, I don't mean unrealistic and um, saying things that don't feel accurate. When I'm using the word positive here for the second rendition of the triangle, what I'm getting at is a more effective, healthier way that you could think about the situation. Okay, so same situation, reflecting after an interview, wishing you had given a different answer to the question. And instead, a more healthy way you could think about this is, I wish I would have answered this differently and I can't change the past. I did a great job on 95% of the interview questions and I had great rapport with the interviewer. I know I'd be a great asset to this company. These kinds of thoughts are gonna create a different feeling or response. They may make you feel more hopeful, more confident, more excited. And even if you're still feeling discouraged, having these kinds of thoughts will turn the dial down on the intensity of the discouragement. So if you were feeling discouraged at a level seven on a one to 10 scale, these kinds of thoughts can turn that down to maybe a four or a five. And then these feeling states can then motivate more effective actions, right? Visualizing HR calling to schedule your follow-up interview. It may inspire you to fire off three more applications and also may prompt you to celebrate your wins, celebrate your success and celebrate an interview well done, even if there are areas that you wish you would have handled differently. Great. All right, so the third area that we cover is personal branding. You know, when people think of branding, they typically think of corporate brand identity. And that involves things like market positioning, slogans and languaging, like Nike's, you know, just do it is a famous one. Brand logo and colors, everybody recognizes Starbucks uh, and their logo and colors. However, the key elements of branding of a corporation are very different from developing a personal brand that will serve you during the job search process. Jeff Bezos famously said, a brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So I would agree with him, and that works for corporations. But when we think of personal branding for the job search process, it's actually one step, one step back from that. It really is, not, it's not what people say about you, but rather what you say about yourself. So in this world, personal branding is all about effectively telling your story. So I'm gonna take you through a tool that we teach our clients to help them tell a compelling story. Uh, there are three key components that go into telling a compelling story. The first is story content. So you need a finely crafted, succinct, like 15 to 30 seconds maximum overview of your unique value proposition and how it, how it has served companies in the past. The second is personality type. So in our program, we use a personality assessment called the DISC. I'm sure many of you are uh, already familiar with that tool. So we teach our clients how to shape their communication and how they tell their story based on the personality type that they're interacting with. And then the third component is internal rhythm match. So everybody vibrates at a different frequency, right? Some people are high energy and, and uh, gregarious. Other people are more, more introverted and, and reserved. Uh, and part of the key of telling a very compelling story and connecting um, with people while telling a, a compelling story is being able to dial in your own energy, being able to dial it up or down so that you match the person with whom you're speaking with. Um, and it's, it's recommended that you either try to energy match or be one notch up or one notch below. And in that way, they feel very, very connected to you, are more open to you, are listening to you, and you're able to create a, a rapport much more easily and quickly. So after this presentation, I encourage you to reflect on your own story and how you can quickly and clearly articulate uh, your unique value proposition in terms of how you've served companies in the past. And um, then as you have the opportunity to tell your story at networking events and interviews, I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to practice getting a sense of the person's personality type that you're speaking with, and then trying to tailor your communication accordingly, while also getting a sense of you know, that person's energy and then dialing your, your own energy up or down accordingly. Um, and just like Mariel said with uh, 
with a triangle is really, really imperative in this situation to also to write out, to write out your, your, your story, your 15 to 30 second story. We, we've been, we've all been living our lives and it just it seems really easy. No problem in, you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, I can like rattle off my story, but you would be amazed at how much better it actually gets if you just take a few minutes, write everything down, fine tune it and make it really, really personalized. So the next area that we take our clients through is LinkedIn strategy. So not only do we help you create a much more compelling profile for LinkedIn, we also teach you how to use LinkedIn to maximum effectiveness. So that way you can find new connections, you can find job leads, and there's a lot of tools and resources that our LinkedIn coach Melanie shares with people to help them to really get the most out of LinkedIn and to also decrease the overwhelm factor. And as I mentioned earlier, Erin and her team with our company create the done for you resume cover letter and LinkedIn profile. So one of the things that I encourage you to do is to look through your own resume cover letter and LinkedIn profile and take a look at it and see where can I make this better, right? This is something that we do for our clients. But as you're looking through these eight steps that we're going through with you today, I want you to give yourself this assessment. How are you doing with your resume cover letter and LinkedIn profile? Oftentimes our clients come to us saying things like, well, it's okay, but I know it could be a lot better. Or, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed of my LinkedIn profile. I heard that from one of our new clients earlier this week. So it's important just to give yourself assess, a self-assessment and see how you feel about these three items that you have. So the next area we cover is networking. All right, so I want you guys to be honest here. Who here, if you're being honest, has felt like networking is a total waste of time. Not always, but perhaps frequently. So if you ever felt that way before, you're not alone. It's a complaint that we frequently hear from our clients and it's understandable. Um, you know, how often have you been at a networking event and you just see people at the food table eating you know, roast beef sandwiches and you're like, hmm, is that really a very effective use of, of time? However, when you craft an individually tailored networking plan and you learn new strategies for networking that you can you can really transform something that feels like a, like a potential waste of time into a very into a powerful relationship and into, uh, into relation powerful relationships and job opportunities so and i'd love to come back in the future and do a whole session on networking but for now i really would like to share a few tips with you that you can implement right away so i have this image of a of a towel, a white towel. And I put it in two different places. So if you take this towel and you put it around a baby's neck, what do you have? You have a bib. And if you think of a baby, it's all about, give me, 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 give me. And a lot of times people, when they think of networking, they align themselves with that give me, give me, give me mentality. I encourage you to take that bib take it off, put it around your wrist, and all of a sudden you're a waiter and you're serving, serving, serving. And that serving mentality, you know, paradoxi paradoxi paradoxically, that serving mentality is where much more is gonna come, come back to you. Um, the more you give, the more that comes back. Secondly, uh, think about connecting people that you meet. The more, uh, the more connections that you can make for others, the more connections are gonna come back your way. Just this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was at the world's largest uh, franchise event here in San Diego, the IFA event. And I was at an opening night a soiree. Um, I randomly ran into this woman who uh, is an executive at Top Golf. It's a concept out of, out of uh, London and the, uh, it's an internal golfing with all sorts of video and all sorts of stuff happening. I, don't, I haven't been, but that's what she was describing it as. And it requires 20,000 square feet of building space. Great. It's very exciting to hear about, and I can't wait for them to open up uh, nearby. I'm going to go check it out. We started circulating again. 20 minutes later, I randomly happened to come across an architect who specializes in branded interiors. So the light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, oh my God, these two people have to connect. So I, I asked the architect, I said, hey, 
I just met this woman. She's with Top Golf. I really think you guys would be great together. Do you mind if I make an introduction? He's like, by all means. Two minutes later, I'd fired off an email. I kid you not. Since that email, I've received probably five different texts on different days from the architect asking him, um, him asking me who he can introduce me to, how he can help me, uh, you know, what he can do for me. It was just like, and believe me, I had, I didn't think for one second like I wanted anything back. I was just so excited. Here's two people. I'm going to be matchmaker. That's it. But serendipitously, look what comes comes back and lands on your lap. Uh, and third. In the next um, uh, week or two, I want, I want you to find a local networking event that you can attend, hopefully in person if you're comfortable with that. And I want you to take the focus off of yourself and your need to find a job just for a little bit. And I just want you to show up and really serve and connect with people. You know, pay attention when people are talking, uh, be curious, ask questions, try to tap into their rhythm and their energy like we were talking about before. Just really get comfortable in that world. And also, you know, if it's been a while since you've read How to Win Friends and Influence People, I just think it's a wonderful book and lays a lot. There's so many tools and tips and tricks and mindset and recommendations in that book that if you haven't read it recently, it's something that I recommend picking up again. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna zoom through our next two steps only because it's really important to me that we have some opportunity to have interaction and conversation and questions. So these next two steps that we take our clients through, I do want you to rate yourself on still, okay? So we take our clients through winning the interview, which is a combination of mindset and strategy. So I want you to remember to give yourself a score on how you feel about your own performance in interviews. And then this next step that we take our clients through is salary negotiations. So with salary negotiations, same thing. I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How effective do you feel in your ability to negotiate your salary? Our salary negotiation coach works with our clients to really help them get the best out of their total compensation package and to look for hidden areas where you can add value to the compensation that you're receiving. So here you see all eight of our core areas that we cover with our clients on one slide. So this is just a recap of everything we've covered and another encouragement to just go through and rate yourself on every single one of these areas. So that way you know where you're excelling, where you're doing great, and also where there's an opportunity for you to build up your skill set. Just a couple of slides left. I'll be quick here as well. This on the screen here is a testimonial from a recent client. His name is Brian Wertinger. He was the garrison commander, which is like the mayor of uh, Fort Carson in Colorado. He was transitioning out of the military after 20 years. He was very keen on getting an executive level position. Uh, so he joined us and we have an eight week program as you've heard. And by week five, he had a high six level, uh, six figure offer that it was his number one uh, job that he was seeking. And he got the offer, he's there. And he actually just called this last, last week saying that, um, Everything's been going so well for him at this particular job that he's now up for a promotion and uh, wanted to share that news with us. So, you know, we, it, it's a very personalized program, as you've heard from Marielle. We actually become very close with our clients. We keep in touch with them. And, um, and if you want to hear Brian, this is a transcription of the testimonial. If you want to actually hear him talk about it or say it, it's on our website. You just go to the, uh, the hiredexecutive.com and scroll down to the testimonial section. So we're going to open it up for questions in just a moment, but as a gift to you guys, we want to offer you a complimentary strategy session. So you may have gotten your needs met through this presentation today, and if you did, that's fantastic. We really encourage you to use the tips and resources that we shared with you today, and if that meets your needs, that's great. If there's anybody here who would like to have more support, we offer these complimentary strategy calls where we work with you. I handle all of the initial calls. And I take you through a process to help you get clear on what's holding you back, what's keeping you stuck, and then how to move forward. So if you're interested in booking a session, you can go to our website, thehiredexecutive.com, and there's a button there to schedule a call. On the call, we'll get clear on what's holding you back and also how you can move forward, and I'll help you to develop a plan. And now we're going to open it up for questions.
So I wanna make sure that we have plenty of time here for conversation. And this is your opportunity to get any of your job search questions answered directly from Craig and I. So let me see, it's taking a scan here in the chat. If you drop your questions in the chat, we can answer them. Who has questions for us? So Vanessa had a question about the slide with the boxes. I don't know if you can pull that up or if you can talk to that, Marielle. Yeah, absolutely. The box. Can you put it in full screen mode? Yep. Yeah. Please. Which? which oh, yeah, you were on the right slide. Yeah. yeah I like okay. So, is there a specific question, or do you want me to just talk to the boxes? Talk to the boxes. Okay. So the boxes are basically everything that Craig and I took you through. So we work on all eight of these areas together. So when a new client comes in, I will take them through a process to get clear. So that's the very first session. So I guide them through a process. I also administer the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs, as well as the DISC to help get clear on where you wanna go next. So that's step one. Step two is to be empowered with mindset tools. So I teach our clients specific mindset tools, including the triangle, but there's also other tools that I teach as well. And then we move our clients on to personal branding where they learn how to tell their story in a compelling way. So that tool that Craig shared during this presentation is part of what we share with our clients. From there, our clients go to our LinkedIn coach, Melanie, and she helps our clients learn how to use LinkedIn in the most effective manner. She also provides some coaching around the LinkedIn profile that then gets passed on to Erin and her team who help you to create a done for you resume cover letter and LinkedIn profile. So of course we meet with our clients to create these items. We take what you have and we make it even better, right? And so Melanie will provide her feedback to Erin and then you will speak with Erin or somebody from her team, which will then result in a done for you resume cover letter and LinkedIn profile. Craig also takes people through strategies for networking. So what he shared here today is just a small sample of some of the techniques that we teach our clients. And then our interview coach takes you through the process of how to peak perform in the interview, how to do your very best and how to really differentiate yourself, how to stand out, how to have that competitive edge. And then our salary negotiations coach teaches you some very, very wonderful techniques for how to negotiate your salary, how to find hidden value within a compensation package, how to ask for things that you may not even think to ask for. So that way you can make sure that you're compensated at the level that you really want to be compensated at. All right. Okay. We have some questions, so let's Great. get to it. Uh, Mark asks, how do you work with individual com contributors versus managers? Is there a different approach that you take between the two? There is not a different approach. So what we do with this program is we individualize it specific to our clients' needs. And that's one of the benefits of our program. So many programs are done in a group setting where it can't be as narrowly tailored. So what we do is we get very clear in that first session what it is that the client's needs are. And then we all, each member of the team, individually tailor exactly what the person needs. So it's different in the sense that we're gonna focus on different things with each client, but it's the same in the sense that we're gonna take you through these same eight areas, but we're gonna personalize it to what you need for each one of these eight areas. Okay, so, uh... The triangle, the arrows go both ways. Can you talk about that and how each of the three can influence the others? Absolutely. So on the triangle, our thoughts create feelings, our feelings create actions, and our actions create thoughts. Our thoughts can also create actions. Actions can then create feelings. So it works in a bi-directional manner. So there's an intersection between what we're thinking, how we're feeling, and what we're doing. And it works in both directions. One of the things that's really important to remember is actions are not outward oriented actions only. Oftentimes the actions that we're taking are inside of our minds, right? So things like ruminating, having repetitive thoughts. So these things influence each other in both ways. So if you want to feel better about a situation, 
you can take an action that helps you feel more confident, more empowered, or you can revise your thought and create a more empowered thought. Either one will help to shift your feeling state. Okay, another question. If you've been in industry and consulting, can you dual track your approach or should you pick one and focus on that? That's a great question. So, well, technically you can dual track if you want to, but I would say that that's not quite as effective. So when clients come into our program, we encourage them to pick one pathway, right? But in terms of, is it effective, generally speaking to do that? It can be, but if you dilute your focus, you're possibly going to dilute your results. So if a new client comes in saying that, one of the things I encourage them to do is to get really clear on what brings them the most joy, what brings them the most passion, and to consider pursuing that area. Okay, uh, here's a great question. Um, how do you get past a junior recruiter in a company that says you are overqualified for the position that you're interested in? That's a great question. Craig, I'm going to let you take that one. <laughs> how do you get, can you repeat that? How do you get through past a junior? A junior, a junior recruiter in a company that says you're overqualified for the position that you're interested in? It is a very good question. I would... I would find out who the uh, hiring manager is at the organization. And I would, um, I'm Canadian, so in a very polite way, <laughs> a very Canadian way, I would go around the junior recruiter and find out who the hiring manager is. I would find out somebody who's connected to that hiring manager in my own network. I would ask for a connection and I would have a polite conversation with that hiring manager about the role. and you know, flesh out why, yes, in certain areas you might be overqualified, but if there was a lot of time for, a lot of room for growth in this role, you know, it's a little bit lower, but then you, you know, you have all the capacity within you to take it to the next level. So there's all sorts of benefit that you can provide that this junior recruiter may not even realize. So I would just try to connect with somebody who experientially is more on your level and, uh, and have that conversation. Great response, Craig. Okay, I like this one. Um, when working with clients, what, uh, what do you see as the areas where job seekers experience the most frustration? So one of the areas that people frequently complain to me about right at the beginning is networking and feeling frustrated about that. Another area that people complain about quite a bit is not hearing back after interviews. And both of these issues really are mindset issues. So there are definitely strategies and techniques that we teach to address them. But one of the things that's really important to work on as you're navigating through the job search process is it's going to entail tolerating some unwanted realities. And it's really important to get crystal clear on what is within your zone of influence and control and what is not. So we can't control anybody outside of ourselves. What we can do is work on influencing and controlling our own thoughts, feelings, and actions. So it's important to just recognize that really with any frustration point that you find during the job searching process, it comes back to what is the story that you're telling yourself about it? What is a more empowering story that you can tell yourself? And how can you shift your actions so those actions are in alignment with the result you wanna create? is normal, of course, to feel frustration during the job search process. But if you're stewing in that emotion too much, it's actually going to repel the very thing that you're looking for, which is a new opportunity. So as we all know, there's many frustration points throughout, uh, but really having the tools to work through and release that frustration is important. Another thing that I recommend to all of our clients when they first get started to deal with the frustration, no matter where it's arising for them, is to get some type of physical activity and movement. That really helps a lot to release the frustration. Thank you, Marielle. Uh, Bill asks uh, for clarification or, or to share more on uh, bullet number three about how you get the hiring manager to see you as the only logical choice for the job. So to see yourself as the only logical choice for the job, you have to see that first before the hiring manager can see that. So the first part of that is mindset, self-confidence, self-beliefs. 
In terms of the how to do that, that's something that's beyond what we're gonna have time to do today, but that's what we take our clients through in terms of our interview coach really helping you to present yourself in a way that there is no other choice except for you because you bring such a compelling skill set to the role and the way you engage is so compelling that they would basically be crazy not to hire you. Thank you. I love that. Um, okay, so people are asking about a uh, program conducted virtually or in person. So the program is virtual, it's 100% virtual. So you don't have to be in any particular area. There's no travel required. And we meet with you over Zoom. So just like we're meeting today. So all of our sessions are conducted over Zoom and you can participate from anywhere. Okay, and um, what's the success rate? That's another question. That's a great question. So we have had an extraordinarily high success rate. Everyone who's come through our program has landed a position with the exception of a couple of people who have had some unfortunate events. We had a client come through that became ill. Another client that came through that had an unfortunate accident, a car accident, and wasn't able to continue the process. So one of the things that's really great about our program is it is so personal. We have a team of people who all have their own businesses. So rather than taking through a large volume of clients, we take through a small group of clients at a time. And we, as Craig mentioned before, we get very close and very connected to our clients. And so we stay with people until they are successful, until they find their next opportunity. So Love that's it. Um, hire. Okay, and then there's a few questions about cost, but before we go there, Wendy Weinberg uh, wants to ask her question out loud. So Wendy, oh, right. unmute yourself. And <laughs> Hi. Away. Yeah, I just think it'll be easier than taking my focus away. First of all, I love the business model. I think it's really interesting. I like that you shift through different folks who have different expertise. Mm -hmm. um, so to that end, like I'm a person that has in within the creative arena, and I'm sure this is applicable to people in every field, but within the creative arena, I happen to straddle both the creative design world, like I have that skill set and I also have the project management and business leader skill set and I have proven track record in both areas. And I've just been thinking a lot about clarity when I get on a call and wondering if it's best for me to decide whether or not it, it cuts me off from other opportunities within the same organization, but like pick one or the other and talk to that organization about that one thing. Otherwise, is it too confusing for them? This is what I love about coaching because you answered your own question <laughs> as you were asking it. Well, I've been thinking about it for three years now. Yeah. So here's what I, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about what you enjoy the most. So very clearly you have a great skill set at both. But which one excites you the most? Which one brings you the most joy? If you were independently wealthy, you didn't have a need to work ever again in your life, which one of those two things would you choose to do? And I'd like to chime in for a second. I'm not quite on the extreme that you are, Wendy, but here's a way to distinguish, distinguish yourself a little bit. You can say- Craig, you hang know, on one second. Craig, can you let her answer my question first? Sure. Yep. It's gonna, oh, yeah, I didn't know you off. wanted an answer. I, I thought that was for me. Uh, the creative piece, but there is a complexity that's too big to discuss now. I'll set up a session. Okay, but great. I, I have more seniority in the business leadership piece and the project management piece than I do in the creative piece because I tabled that for a long time. Okay, yeah, I'd love to invite you to set up a session and then we can talk through it in more detail. Okay. Hey, Craig, did you want to? I was, I was just going to chime in and say uh, one phrase that you can use, Wendy, is you can say, you know, some people are very, like, very analytical. Some people are very creative. And I happen to actually straddle both. Some people are left brained, some people are right brained. I'm mid brained. Now I take that mid brained, that, that, that mid brain um, skill set, and I can laser focus it in the creative, I can laser focus it. On the analytical. So if you're you know going down the project management path, say, oh yeah, I can totally dial that in. However, in the background, I have this 
really unique ability to actually straddle both worlds and, and make that, you know, take that to my advantage. So Thanks. That, that's actually how I sell it. I, I like maybe not brain. very well, but that's how I sell it. I, I love that term midbrain. So, uh, okay, we're about out Thank of time. You. Uh, people are asking about the cost. Do you guys want to talk about the cost at all? So if you want to learn more about the program, I'm happy to talk about the cost with you, but in the interest of time, I think the more effective place to do that would be on the call. So that's absolutely something that I'll go over with people who choose to take it a step further and want to book a call and learn more. Okay, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. Uh, excited that uh, you were here. Hope you're going to be here again and uh, we'll, ha we'll have you back. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen Craig. Really appreciate it. Everyone, hey, and uh, mugs up. If you want a mug, let us know real quickly in the chat or send an email to bootcamp at prgwest.com. And, uh, you know, let's stay in touch. And uh, one more question. How is everyone uh, with the idea of uh, inviting people outside of the bootcamp community to these uh these Friday coffee sessions. Let us know. Cheryl will reach out and uh, ask again, and we'd love to uh, hear your answer to that. So um, thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, have a great you. weekend. And we'll see you next week. We uh, Our speaker is going to talk about image and uh, style. So thank you, Mary Ellen Craig. Thank you so Look forward much. Forward to the uh, recording, everyone. Thank you. Have Thank a great you. weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye bye.